In this one, we're building a super smooth 3D swipe card effect in Swift UI. It's that kind of swipe where the top card follows your finger, rotates, scales, and even tilts in 3D while you drag and when you let go, it flies off and the next one steps up. We'll go through how to handle the drag gesture, how to animate the cards with rotation and scale, how to control the stack order using just a visual trick all of it. It's actually way simpler than it looks. And by the end, you'll be able to build it from scratch and customize it however you like. Let's go. All right, so here I've got an array of colors. These will be the backgrounds for our cards. I'm using some custom ones here just because they look a bit softer and more modern, but you don't have to. You can totally go with the basic built-in ones like red, blue, it'll work exactly the same. Each color is one card. That's it, simple. This is the value that keeps track of how much the card is moving while we're dragging. We'll use it to shift the card left and right in real time. And since it's a state, SwiftUI will re-render the view whenever it changes, which is exactly what we want for smooth animation. Top card index. This is just a way to keep track of which card is currently on top of the stack. So when we swipe a card away, we update this number to point to the next card. That's how we cycle through the list without actually removing or deleting anything, we're just changing which one is in front. Width is just the size we'll use for the card's width. That's it, we'll plug this into the rectangle to give it a fixed size. Cards indices just gives us the range of all the positions in the array, like 0, 1, 2, and so on. We use it so we can loop through every card and know which one we're working with. Visual index is just a way for us to figure out where each card should appear in the stack, like who's in front, who's behind, and so on without actually changing the order of the array. So we take the current index of the card and subtract the top card index, which tells us how far that card is from the one on top. But if we're near the end of the array and we subtract, we might end up with a negative number and we don't want that because we can't use a negative index in the UI. So we fix that by adding cards that count, which basically shifts everything into the positive range. Then we use the percent sign the modulo, which wraps the result back into the valid range of zero to the last index, so it loops around. The final number we get is the visual position of that card in the stack zero means it's on top, one means it's right behind, two is further back, and so on. That's how we make the cards cycle smoothly, over and over even though we're just drawing the same list every time. Progress is how much the user has dragged the card, but in a normalized way, a value between zero and one. So if they just barely move it, progress is small, like 0 0.1. If they drag far, it gets closer to one. We calculate it by taking the absolute value of the drag distance and dividing it by 150. That 150 is just the number we pick to say, this is the distance that counts as a full swipe. We use abs here because the user might swipe left or right, so we only care about how far, not which direction. And we use min to make sure it never goes above one, even if they drag super far. This value is perfect for controlling how much we animate things, like rotation or scale, based on how far the card has been pulled. Sign progress is just like progress, but now we're also keeping track of direction, so we know if the user is swiping left or right. If they swipe right, it's a positive number. If they swipe left, it becomes negative. That's useful because some animations, like rotation or 3D tilt, need to know which way the card is going. So this gives us a smooth value between negative one and one, depending on how far and which direction the swipe is going. This offset controls where the card appears on the screen. So for the top card, the one the user is actually dragging, we want it to follow the finger. That's why, if visual index is zero, we use the drag offset, the width, so it moves exactly with the drag gesture. It feels like you're physically pushing it left or right. Now for the other cards, the ones behind, we don't want them to move with the finger. They're not being dragged. But we still want them to be slightly shifted, so the stack looks layered and natural. So for those, we multiply their visual index by 10 for x and by negative 4 for y. That gives each card a small step to the right and upward as it goes deeper in the stack. It's kind of like fanning out a deck of cards slightly, where each card is nudged over just a bit from the one before it. The reason we do this is purely visual. It makes the stack look alive. You can instantly tell there's more than one card behind the top one, and it adds depth and motion to the whole swipe experience. So now that we've moved the card visually using offset, we also need to make sure it appears on top of the stack 
otherwise it might get hidden behind the others. That's where Zindex comes in. By default, SwiftUI draws views in the order they're written, but with Zindex, we can control what's on top no matter the order. We give each card a Zindex based on how close it is to the front. The top card, the one being dragged, gets the highest Zindex, so it's always above the others. And the cards in the back get lower values, so they stay underneath. Now the cool part is, when we swipe a card, we don't delete it, we just rotate it to the back by changing the top card index. That means the card that was first becomes last. And this Z-index logic helps us reverse the visual stack so the next one can come forward. It's what gives us that feeling of cards looping forward one by one. This rotation gives the card a little tilt to make the stack feel more dynamic. We only apply it to the cards that are not on top, so they lean slightly backward based on their depth in the stack. We multiply the visual index by three to control how much they tilt, so the second card tilts a bit, the third a bit more, and so on. But we also subtract part of the progress value from that, so when you're dragging, the tilt of the next card starts to relax like it's getting ready to come forward. And we set the anchor to bottom, which means the rotation happens from the bottom edge of the card like it's leaning backward from its base. This is where we scale the cards to make the top one look full size, and the ones behind it a little smaller. It helps create that depth effect, like the front card is closer to you. So, if the card is on top, the scale is one node change. If it's second, we shrink it slightly, but we also let it grow a bit while you're dragging, using the progress value. That way, as you swipe the top card away, the next one starts to scale up and feels like it's coming forward. The deeper the card is in the stack, the smaller it gets, which makes the transition feel smooth and natural. This extra offset shifts the card slightly to the left, based on how deep they are in the stack. It's a small touch, but it helps push the whole stack toward the center instead of having each card perfectly aligned. Without this, the stack might feel a little too stiff or robotic. This just gives it a more natural, layered look, like they're nudged together slightly as they go back. This is where we add a 3D rotation effect to make the swipe feel more real. So when you drag the top card, it tilts slightly in 3D, like it's rotating around a vertical axis. We use sign progress here to control the direction. If you swipe right, it tilts right. And if you swipe left, it tilts left. But we only apply this effect to the top card and the one right behind it, just to keep it subtle. The rest of the stack stays flat, so it doesn't get too noisy. This little 3D movement makes the interaction feel more physical and playful. Content shape makes sure the drag only works when you actually touch the card itself. Without content shape, the whole area of the view might respond to gestures, even empty space around the card. By adding this, we're telling SwiftUI, only react when the user touches inside the shape of the rectangle. It's a small detail, but it keeps the interaction clean so you don't accidentally swipe just by tapping somewhere near the card. Here, we attach the drag gesture to the card so it can respond to user interaction. We set minimum distance to zero so the drag starts immediately, even with the tiniest touch. That makes it feel super responsive. The card begins moving the moment your finger makes contact. We'll handle the logic for how far it moves and what happens when you let go inside the gesture's unchanged and unended parts. This is where we handle what happens while the user is dragging. Inside unchanged, we update drag offset with the current finger movement. That's what makes the top card follow your finger in real time. Every frame as you drag, SwiftUI re-renders the view with the new offset, so it feels super smooth and responsive, like you're physically sliding the card across the screen. All right, this whole block is unended, and it runs the moment the user lifts their finger after dragging. So the gesture is over, and now we decide what to do next. Either swipe the card away if it was dragged far enough, or bring it back to its original position if it wasn't. This is where we lock in the final result of the interaction. Here we set a threshold, basically, how far the user needs to drag before we count it as a real swipe. In this case, if the drag is more than 50 points left or right, we'll treat it like they meant to swipe the card away. If it's less than that, we'll cancel the gesture and snap the card back to its place. This helps prevent accidental swipes from just small touches. Here we figure out which direction the user swiped left or right. If the drag was to the right, we set the direction to one. If it was to the left, we set it to negative one. This value helps us know where to animate the card should it fly off to the left or the right. Everything about the final movement depends on this direction. This delay is there to make sure the swipe animation has time to finish before we move the card to the back of the stack. So when the user swipes, 
we first animate the card flying off the screen to the left or right. But if we immediately update the top card index and reset everything, it'll look like the card teleports instead of sliding away. By adding this short delay, we give the card time to fully animate out, and then we shift it to the back. That's what keeps the whole interaction feeling smooth and natural, like the card is really moving through the stack. Here, we check if the swipe distance was strong enough if it passed the threshold. If it did, that means the user clearly meant to swipe, so we go ahead and animate the card off the screen in the right direction. We use width animation to smoothly move it left or right, depending on where they dragged. This gives us that final swipe out motion before the card gets recycled to the back. Direction is where we figure out the swipe direction, again, just before we animate the card. Even though we already checked it earlier, we define it here again inside the same block just to make sure we have the right direction for this specific animation. If the user swiped to the right, direction is one, and if they swipe to the left, it's negative one. We'll use this right after to decide which way to push the card off screen. Here we animate the card flying off the screen depending on the swipe direction. If the user swiped to the left, we move the card to width, which is exactly the width of the card, so it slides fully off the left side. We already defined that width earlier as 180, so this makes sure the whole card disappears cleanly. But if the user swiped to the right, we move it a bit further with asterisk 1.33. That means the card slides off to the right with just a little extra distance. We do that on purpose because on the right side, we usually have more room and more cards underneath it. That extra push makes the motion feel more natural and gives a bit of energy to the swipe, like the card is confidently exiting the stack. It's a small detail, but it adds a nice polish to the whole interaction. Now we use dispatch dispatchq.main.async after to wait for that short delay we talked about earlier, just enough time for the swipe out animation to finish. After that, we update the top card index so the next card comes forward and reset drag offset back to zero. That's what actually sends the swipe card to the back of the stack and gets everything ready for the next swipe. It's like finishing one smooth motion and resetting the scene. Else, if the swipe wasn't strong enough, meaning the user didn't drag far past the threshold. In that case, we don't want to remove the card, we just animate it back to its original position. So here we reset the drag offset to zero using width animation, and the card smoothly snaps back into place like nothing happened. It keeps the interaction forgiving and polished.